Hi, this is Tayton Nguyen from A Nomadic. Today, I'm very excited to share with you a complete Canvas app template that I just finished. I am not an IT professional. I came from InfoPass, a local developing platform so that I can address business needs. Jumping to Power App was just a leap, but it gave me a lot more flexibility to deploy a much more meaningful and rich application. So when I first started, I almost always customize my app for my SharePoint list. But later on, I learned that Canvas app, even though it's a lot more work upfront, it gives me a lot more flexibility. I don't have to deal with the data cards. I can make my app reusable when I build out similar form or processes. And so when I first started, I wish there was a complete Canvas app out there that I can download with instruction for me to basically create the table, connect everything into, and just to see how things work from A to Z. And so, well, here it is. I have completed that. I will give you the form, how to save to SharePoint list, what type of list, how many data field you need to create, what type of data field that is, and then how to retrieve a record upon submission, how to find out the number of records that you submitted, what about your manager, how can they find out the number of records that they need to act upon for approval. And so this is a comprehensive starter Canvas app that you can literally get right now for a low, low price. Because if you are to build this out, it will take days. You can have it with just like the cost of a couple of cup of coffees that you can just purchase for me for my effort here. And I will provide you instructions how to build out the data tables to write the record to and everything about retrieving the records already in place with documentation with comments right on the code. So there will be two part videos. This one right here is just to demo of the app and hopefully you find this helpful. Okay, remember this is Canvas, so you can customize your data, expand the number of data field, reduce it down to fit your needs. But then again, once you have this, you can build so many more apps from this complete template. And so let's get started with the app, and then hopefully you will go to the next video and look at the deep dive. And I am hopeful that you find this helpful and purchase the template. Right? We will save you a lot of time and it will support what I do. So let's get right to it. The template has four screens. This is the dashboard. Submitter can request a new entry. View submitted record if exists. Now below we have supervisor and application admin area. The role for app admin can be specified right on the app or looked up at a SharePoint table. It will check the email address from a list against the current user. If it finds a match, it will run access. For supervisor, it is user specific. Any record out there that specify Nathan Wynn, the current user, as supervisor, then the individual can pull up all the records here. Read only access because the form has a courtesy email. If specify, then the user can pull those records up where they have read-only access. I will go into detail of this button later, but for now, we're just looking at the screen. Of course, on the left side menu, we have button that can open up a PDF. We can access admin panel if we have the role. But for now, let's view existing because I have a record out there already. It's a test case because I only have one. It render up that record. If I have multiple for whatever the reason, it will give me a list to select from. This is an approved record with all the data fields. And this is our second screen. Now, this one already proved, therefore the record is locked. If we click on the lock, we could see all the history of the record, who signed, when they signed. Close this. If we click on this print icon, we would be brought to the third screen, which is the print preview, where we have a PDF previewer control. And we can download this PDF right here by clicking on this. A dialog will open. You can save as or open. This is the PDF copy. Now we go back to the app with Office 365 Outlook connected. This button here will email the current user a copy of this PDF. Now we have gone through the third one. The fourth is the app admin. The app admin is for us to make 
manage the record in the admin panel screen. This is where we manage our record. For example, this record here is pending for supervisor review, checking the log, the employee submitted the record. Now, if I am the manager, I can sign and approve this, but I am not identified as a manager for this record. This is where in the admin panel, we can basically test and demo. I can make myself a supervisor at the moment and go ahead and approve this record here. And we'll go to the law, supervisor sign it. In reality, this shouldn't happen. It couldn't happen, but we are demoing, so we, we can. Hypothetically speaking, the supervisor contact and say, hey, I signed it by mistake. Would you please reset? So this is where it comes to handy. We change it back to pending supervisor review, go back out, right? It pending supervisor review, and now I can undo that and deny this now become denied and all of that will capture in the log so the admin panel allow the user to manage the record say instead of deny we say let's put the record back to the employee so that they can do a better job they can modify the justification uh, and resubmit through we can change it to draft and as you can see when we update the record to draft the record log turn to no because only then we get to modify this record and now the employee we fix this, go ahead and resubmit through and see that. And that after they submit through, all fields become read only again. The workflow trigger. The workflow trigger is a secondary indicator for Power Automate. So if you are to implement, and which I recommend you to implement a Power Automate to send notifications to supervisor and employee, etc., I will have a separate tutorial or video on that. But but for now, just, just hear me out. If you are to create a Power Automate, based on the record status alone for example when the record status is pending supervisor review we email the supervisor but what if we are making modification to this record and we we're not updating the record status then another email will be sent to the supervisor unintentionally so I always pair that with an indicator named workflow trigger so on the appropriate step I set workflow trigger to yes pairing with the record status then it will perform a notification send out an email after that step is done, it set itself back to no. So next time if we update some other field, the workflow trigger remain no. So even if the pending supervisor review status is the same, but it does not have the right condition for another email to be sent out. So it's very important to have a an indicator helper for your flow or how automate. This is just for testing and demoing purpose from the current user email and of course this is default Nathan Wynn however let's say a manager contacting you hey I cannot pull up all the record that have me as supervisor this is where you can test you can update this to the supervisor email rerun go back to the dashboard to validate what they are saying and then here's are some of the cases where you say hey if the supervisor can they do this x y and z this is where you be able to manage that right app admin etc okay so that's all there is to this app admin panel okay all right let's now go through the form here and all the control we know that from the dashboard if we click on view existing and we have a record it would pull up that very record however if we proceed with a new entry request we come up with a blank form now all fields are locked until we click on start new when we click on start new it assign a record id and then put the record in draft mode of course we can always go back out view existing now that we have two record you come up with a list and now we're gonna search for the one that is in draft we can definitely search by that so we take to load if we click on submit and say hey select your supervisor here's the courtesy copy that it is entirely optional at this point if we submit for any text here other than date or combo box the application will set focus to the MT view if I click on submit again of course it jump to the next one we proceed provide current salary and the remote work salary generally speaking mostly the same all right now as you see down here the supervisor area is gray out for the right thing if we go log now we are initiated now at this point we can just save and come back later on if we are to proceed with the submission we can do that submit it asks to confirm submission the submit turn to confirm submission here we click and now it's any supervisor review you should be able to see that here now if we go back out 
and we click on supervisor report we don't see anything because right now we log in on as Nathan Nguyen the supervisor that I specify on the test record is my boss at a nomadic therefore we're gonna utilize the admin panel to update the current user email to my boss rerun the road check go back out click on supervisor there's the two record that my boss is seeing because both of them are pending for supervisor review that's why they are here let's go ahead and proceed with with one right now and you see the difference in the filtering click now we act as my boss but we need to give ourselves the supervisor role approve confirm go back out now let's run the supervisor report again we only see one record appears as pending because it is pending for supervisor review this need the immediate attention right away however if we change to all we see the one that we just recently signed for read only access is the same thing there's nothing here but if we go to admin panel, change to somebody, rerun. Because when we look at one of the record, we have somebody at a nomadic for CC email. Go back to the app, read only access, and see that particular one that we can bring it up. You click on the print icon here. A print preview is being generated. Here it is. We can click to save. If you would like to receive the attachment via email, you can click this icon here. There will be a success message on top. And then within seconds, you get an email. And the attachment will have the same name as the record ID. And you click to download in your email. So the functionality of the form is all there for you to see. I'm gonna go into the control for each of screen quickly for the next couple of minutes. And if you are interested, hopefully you will purchase a copy to support me. In the tree view, we see the four screen. The code on the controls are easier to get to because most of them are burned. We can get them on select, on change, or in the default area. However, I would like to focus your attention into the area where codes aren't that obvious. Number one is the app on start. These are the set of codes that run before anything renders. When you get a copy of this, you want to comment out this hard code and you would like to use the Office 365 user information. In Power Apps, we don't have the concept of reusable code in a subroutine or function, but that doesn't mean we cannot do that. I utilize the toggle control, which I put in the side menu container here. The toggle control can easily be changed or triggered by assigning it to a boolean variables when we update this boolean variable by setting itself to become opposite of itself if it's true it become false it's false become true and that change will trigger the code in the on change to run and so here i have a set of codes where i run and put records of the current user into collection my records and it will look out there and see if any record that have current user as supervisor and put it into the supervisor record read only and also app admin and so if i would like to run this code on the app startup i would have to place it here and then anywhere else within the app i would like to refresh that list i would have the same set of codes over and over now instead of that i put the codes in the target control on chains and then every time i want to activate those code i just set the default variables of the boolean to equal to opposite of itself so that's the concept of running a subroutine or reusable code now at the bottom of the on start i have the var function low runs var function low does not sit in the dashboard screen but rather on the main so if you are to run this in the development environment it should work however if you publish this app the live version you won't be able to activate a control across a different screen you can only activate the control within the screen that you are in so on low we're gonna be in the dashboard screen therefore any activation of the target control sitting in main won't work However, there is a workaround. In the dashboard screen, we have a label controls. A label control, I named this a function color helper. Okay, and all you have to do in this dashboard screen, the label control in the text, you should reference the control that you are going to call in main. For example, this one is the function load screen. 
main function load dot value and this label control here does not need to be visible on the screen as long as it is within the screen that you are calling the function from you can use that as a helper and in here i have extensive explanation on why that should work if you are to call not only the load function but also a save function you can do this sm function save dot value so this helper here will work for all the control you are going to call or activate as long as you reference the values of that control from your calling screen. I hope that makes sense to you because it is very important that it is understood. And so other than the run query function here in the dashboard, we have the load and the save. And the load is simply take the record with the unique record ID, put it into this collection and basically assign the value into the variables that sit in the control of the form and so we have this all this assignment and some condition here for the save is the opposite we uh we have a couple condition upon creation upon update upon submission what do we do um, but at the end in the bottom it's a patching the record to where the record id is equal to var field record id and we're just taking the variables and push it back to the cell point list that we have here and so i do include an excel helper tool i assume the forms that you are using for your business need will not have the same number of fields that i do here in this sample template you can update it here var field as i mentioned var field are the leading variables name so that you know you have to write those to the cell point list or your data table and then from that we have a formula to extract what your data field should be of course the type here you need to specify in any default value that need to be specified this is just for your own information however it will generate out the codes for saving so you can just copy and then go back out there and just paste it on your save code right here same thing with your loading code and see that is a formulated and so you can definitely update it here so that you can just copy and paste over there's a lot of change in your variables and few names that's really is the key to going through and understand how this works i assume when you get this file it would take some time to basically go into step by step and going through all the control but i build this thing i use a lot of basically reference for example the x and the y coordinate the width i use the submitter width for across the board so if i change the width for the submitter label right here the rest of them will change that's one of the things that i would like to introduce you to it took a lot more time for me to build this template out however i want you to start out with a good one here for the y coordinate i, I take the the control prior y location at the height of that and then at five for cushion and you do that across the board so basically i just reference the one above that if you need to break that formula you can just go here you know the y value right now is 180 you can just type in manually 180 comment this out okay and so you can just basically drag it down and everything down below will move with it because it's, it's reference this fair control you should break the bond from the control above it to insert a new one and then check, update the starting point of with the new control as you see here all my control are name um, friendly name such as supervisor right here the label and then this is the picker this is the label and this is the text so i often have the leading screen name to my control so that i know i'm referencing this screen main control looking at the main screen other than the header and further components we have the side menu right here on the right side we have the right action container this right action container will be hidden once it's no longer in draft mode it's important to know that the entire form is within this form container it's important to be in this container because the pdf preview is getting the entire content from this container right here very important that you make a note of that within this form container we have the printing header container that is hidden and will reference this variable the boolean variable here for its visibility 
at the moment is false. Let's just change this to true for one second. So you can see this is nothing more than just a replicate of the form header on top. This form header is a component which will not be included in the PDF generation. And therefore, I have to duplicate so that we have a form header when we print. And this var prints will be true when we hit this print icon. So it's important that you have an understanding of that. It will back here, click, click. It hide at the moment behind this panel you see that printing header up here. And when it's moved over to the other screen, this is the small printing container on your left side right here, not the one on top, okay? Moving on, let's take a look at a text control. Right now, the default values for this text control is var field position title, currently program manager. If we select on change, we notice that upon change, it will assign the variables, the text boxes text self, which is this control dot text. So if I am to make a change, let me go ahead and change it to draft record lock is no, we can go ahead and change this to program control. The new title program control is only assigned to this variable but not yet update the record until we hit one of these two buttons, which does the same thing. Let's take a look at the button real quick. The timer here prevents the user from hitting the save button consecutively. It, there has to be a 90 second in between. This is important when we have Power Automate because if you send this update action too soon, it will cancel the Power Automate that sent prior. And so we leave the timer there, but when the record status is unsafe draft, only then we create a new record. Otherwise, we just update. This is so that this function here know what to do. This is the calling the function safe by sending itself opposite of what it was. Looking at the function safe, when we pass in var type update, it only changed the record log referencing the current user and the date and timestamp when it was last changed. Other than that, whatever values enter in these text boxes assigned to the variable, which then get update to the cell point table filtered by the record ID. It's very important that we take a note of that because when click save, it say right here, record updated, go to log, it has the timestamp, it changed to program control, we can go back out, view, go back in, it is program control. Let's take a look at the pull up of a record. This is on the dashboard screen. In here, I have a scroll named pop up. This pop up is when we click any of this button to pull up the list. And that's when we activate the pop up in the visible property. Listening to this Boolean at the moment is true. When you click on this X, it's false. Now, upon making this selection here, it passed the record ID to var record to load, and then it will run the load function. Looking at the load function down here, it trying to query the data table with the record to load. Whatever return it assigned to this collection right here. And from this collection, it just basically set the variables here to that field of the record. And this is where you can utilize the Excel file that comes with this template. Now, when the record to load is new, it has some default values to assign, such as username and email from the current username and email, but otherwise it would just pull up the record. Okay, now go back out. When we click on new entry, it works the same way. It set var record to load new, and now it tries to pull up the load function. Of course, there is no record with record ID new, therefore it returned a, a blank collection of the record. And then anything that we assign, anything we take from that not existing record would be blank. And that is why we, when we pull up new entry, everything else is blank. If we hit this star new or this save button, it's the same function. Right now, the record status is unsafe draft. Therefore, the var save type would be create. And then the save function is now called. Called. With this create, it generate a record ID using the current date and timestamp. And then it go ahead and create a blank 
record nothing but the record id it then default some of the values here and it goes through this list of code apply whatever applicable and then it go ahead and update the record that we just create a second ago with all the data that is generated or collected from uh, the data entry that's that's really all it is i hope you find this helpful uh, as you see here you are getting a lot with this template you have the header component footer component you will have access to the print preview how to use the click to download how to email uh, to get a pdf copy without using power automate and so there's a lot of values in this package hopefully you will support me and save yourself a lot of time building this out uh, it's a good starting template so i'm looking forward uh, to hear your comment and seeing you placing that order uh, feel free to reach out i will try my very best to respond to your question though i cannot promise that i can answer every single question out there okay all right looking forward to the next video with you